In order to index where the control horns are going to go, I just take a piece of push rod, insert it into the servo arm, and then hold it up against the control surface. It is intended to articulate like that, straight back. And then just make a little mark right there. And then I'll do the same for the elevator. You can see it, have it go straight back as possible, like that. Make a little mark. Now I'm just going to cut out my control horns from a gift card or credit card or whatever material you like, just using ordinary scissors. And the length of the control horn itself from here to here should be about the same as the distance between your servo spline screw and the center of the servo arm to the whatever hole you wish to use. Typically the last one or the second to the last one plus the thickness of the foam that the control horn is going to pass through like this. So for example the distance that I've drilled in the control horn here to the base of the control horn is the same as the distance between this screw and the last hole like that plus the thickness of the foam. So roughly the white part of the that you see here in the control horn is the thickness of the foam and the black uh, magnetic stripe to the center of the spline screw is the rest of the distance. That will ensure that you get good consistent um, excursion of your control surfaces when the servo arms move. I typically just cut a series of strips from the gift card like this that are tapered with the small end accepting the hole for the push rod and the broader base will be the part that engages the control surface itself. And the consideration for the dimensions of this is the dimension through which the um, control arm is going to pass through the control surface, let's say about here, should not be more than half the distance between the hinge and the trailing edge. So I'll lay this down, you'll see this distance from here to here is no more than half the distance from here to here. That will ensure that when you make the slit to allow the control horn to come through, there's still a nice bridge of material behind it to provide good uh, stiffness of your control surface. So now I've taken two of these pieces and clamped them into this tool and folded back the bases. So these are the actual control horn itself and these are the base. Doing it symmetrically like this is advisable on the control surfaces of the tail, but it's really mandatory for ailerons so you get good symmetrical movement of your ailerons. And what I'll do is just take a piece of the push rod that I'm going to eventually use and put it in a Dremel or a drill. And uh, having been cut off with dikes, it has a nice little chisel tip to it that you can use to drill right through the corner. Pretty close. Pretty close right up to the corner. And that's where your, your push rod will go through. And so this base has a lot of excess material. I'll typically just cut off some of that so I have roughly a square here. And also note that since you want this hole for the push rod to go as close as possible to the hinge, what I'll do is cut a little notch here and here. And then so when installed, you can see that it, the hole here will come much closer to the hinge as this will, will be allowed to be moved forward to the control surface itself. Okay, now I'm going to apply my control horns to the moving sur control surfaces of my tail here. And note ideally that you want your servos on the same side of the hinge as the tape is flat. In other words, so the rudder servo would go on this side where the tape is solid better than if it were on the side with a notch. It's not crucial, but it's a little advisable. So we want the horn to come out here, and this is the horn that will engage this servo arm right here for the rudder. And then for the elevator, it's going to be here to engage the elevator servo. So what I do is, using the control horn as a guide, note this dimension here of the base, and starting at the actual hinge itself where you've marked it, make a little slit with a razor blade 
Make the slit about the same dimension as the base of your control horn. And then from the opposite side, you'll be able to push it through that slit. And so there's your horn comes out the other side. Notice since you've made that little recess that allows it to articulate fully back and forth without anything getting in the way. Take the control horn, stick it through, and ensure that it also has good full up and down excursion like that. So once you're satisfied with that, you can just lift this up a little bit, squirt hot glue underneath, and press it back down. And same here with the rudder, is put hot glue under here, squish it together, and then we'll be ready to connect your push rods. Now for putting on push rods, the best practice is probably to use these uh, adjustable quick connect servo arm adapters like this. But with some practice, you can actually end up bending your push rods in one piece like this and getting it pretty close to right. I personally like to use a Z-bend at one end and then a sideways modified Z-bend at the other end, which allows disconnection and connection pretty quickly. You can also incorporate a little V-bend and somewhere in your push rod that allows you to uh, bend this narrower or wider in order to get a little extra length or shortness to adjust your overall push rod, push rod length. So by putting the ordinary Z-bend at this end and the modified Z-bend at the other end, that allows you just to give this a little twist to get it to engage the hole in your control horn. So there is a completed simple tail ready to be installed on the aircraft with servos, push rods, and control arms in place. It is far from beautiful, but it is simple and effective and it's a good starting point for more intricate installations of these. And of course this is easily removed if you use a 3M mounting tape or hot glue. You can typically just pull it off very slowly or you can use a shot of the uh, dust off upside down, freeze it, and snap it right off.